How a 3,000-year-old fish can save the world. Now that is food for thought. A lot of Africans in the room, it's fantastic to see. A lot of people know the fish that I'm talking about. I'm a farmer from up north. We're in uh, Heckpoort, which is about 76 k's north of here. We've got uh, an aquaponics farm. I'm an aquaponics farmer. Um, we produce about three tons of fish a, a month, and we produce about six tons of fresh veg a month out of an aquaponic environment, DWC, media beds, and uh, a recirculating aquaculture system. So you might say, Lance, what's aquaponics? Basically, aquaponics is aquaculture on the one hand, and aquaculture is the cultivation of fish in a controlled environment, and then hydroponics on the other hand, which is the cultivation of veg in water without the need for soil. Together, these two come together and make aquaponics. And that's what I am. I'm an aquaponic farmer. An aquaponic farm has the potential to comply with 17 of the 17 SDGs. Just think about that for a minute. So we've got a, a slide where we table every single one of the SDGs. So it's something that is a top of list. That's a little picture. Most of you have seen it up Africa. This is something that appears on every menu. It's the most amazing, amazing fish. It's widely, it's internationally, the widest farmed species in the world. It is quick to grow. It is a significant protein source. It has the incredible ability to survive and adapt to its environment. I'm convinced that this little fish is going to be a massive part of food security on the African continent. When we use the words waste, hunger, overcultivation, climate, they all conjure up, or they all come, come to the fore when we talk about food insecurity. Overfishing, a bycatch, an ecosystem harming, harming our ecosystem. These are all words that pop up when we're talking about unsustainable practices. Our oceans are in trouble. The ecosystems are in trouble. If we look at a circular ecosystem, like the one in front of you, this is one of my staff members, Raymond, he's busy on a harvest. This is where we grow. We've got 3,500 square meters of this type of growing methodology. So if we entertain a circular ecosystem like this, we create our own fertilizers, we grow food, we protect the environment, we feed people, and we regenerate. On the other side, the aquaculture side, sustainable farming. Again, no waste. We take the waste from our aquaculture, we mineralize it, and we put it back into our vegetables. It's water-wise. We use a fraction of the water that you use in traditional farming. It's intensive. And in a country where land is quite emotive, we don't need fertile soil. And we don't need a lot of land. We farm on less than a hectare. I mean, look at that. Delicious. That's tilapia, that's veg. It's an entire meal. This is what we produce. Simple, simple food. Delicious Nutritious. So, how do we make it happen? How do, we, how do we bring this all together? How do we create a country of successful aqua farmers, whether it's aquaculture or aquaponics? We need an in depth understanding and an acceptance of the commercial ecosystem. And I'm talking specifically about the aquaponics value chain. If we only address certain elements of this ecosystem, it will not be sustainable and invariably results in business failure. The elements of the ecosystem are knowledge, skills, technique, technology, markets, government, educational institutions, goes on and on. So I want to just talk about a few of them, and I believe these are the most important ones, and starting with knowledge. You know, in this country, there's a focus on cert certificates and focus on BSc degrees, and that's important. 
It is the foundation. And we need to give our youth that foundation. But it's not your key to success. Skills. It's vitally important. A hands-on approach is needed. It's a chicken and egg scenario. We haven't got aquaculture farms, we haven't got aquaponics farms in the country where we can plug students into. It's a cost center. Skills development is a cost center. It requires financial resources and practical opportunities. We need to build hands-wet academies. We need to concentrate on human development. We need to implement projects like A to B transformation. A to B transformation is the transformation of a human through the seven steps of occupational intelligence. We've implemented this on our farm with great success. Technique. Now, technique is specific to an operation. We're talking about farming. It's specific to the land that you're on, it's specific to the equipment that you use, the people that you employ. Part of technique is understanding tribalism. Part of technique is understanding language barriers. This is all part of technique that we face on a daily basis. We are asking farmers to do more and more and more. We are asking them to be administrators, understand accounts, understand supply chain, understand distribution, getting your project, product to market. These are all things we are asking a farmer to do over and above the propagation of a lettuce and animal husbandry. Technology, smart agriculture, innovative systems. This is a must. This is the future. Climate-controlled environments. We need to optimize operations, minimize the environmental impact. We are advocates of data-driven approaches. We need to increase the efficiencies and sustainability. Markets. In this country, we've got two distinct markets. We've got formal and we've got informal. We, we focus on the formal market and that makes the informal quite easy. But th the price of our product is dictated by the market. The farm gate selling price is dictated by the market. There is a lot of work that is going in to developing this particular market. So we come to the word commercialization. And there's a lot of discussion around what that means, and especially for small-scale farmers. What is commercialization? We need to be able to make a profit. We have to be able to profit. So how do we get there? How do we get there when we've got new age farmers, when we've got people that haven't got the skills that you need to run an organization? How do we include first-generational farmers? Farming is generational because skill is passed down from generation to generation. So how do we create a generation, we need to start now. Government support. It's a, it's a hot topic for me. We deal with a lot of, uh, of governments, or of government divisions. It's land, it's water affairs, it's forestry and fisheries, it's environment we've got to do, uh, EIAs, you know, certification is such a big part of this. So government support is critical. And we need the buy-in. But we need more than just buy-in, we need action. Government has a lot to do, and you know, I love the fact that the UN is in, involved because they're the only way we can gain access to anything to do with the UN, whether it's FAO or whether it's World Food Programme, is through our government. So our government has a responsibility to deliver. How do we create a bankable business? We've had a number of different investors, and we've been under the cloche to to understand the bankable business side. At the core of it is the business plan. It's core to this. Correct people. You know, the money well spent is getting the correct people to build that plan for you. Don't take it lightly. Spend that money on the business plan. It answers so many questions before you start making a, um, well, before you start falling into trouble. The role of the farmer must be defined. It gets misunderstood with that of an entrepreneur. And maybe it's one thing. Maybe a farmer is a, an entrepreneur. He's an animal. He gets up in the morning, he's got so much to deal with and everything else that's involved. 
We need to define the role of a farmer and be very clear where support comes from for those farmers. So I've presented two things today. I've presented aquaponics, and I absolutely love it. It is the future. It is going to be part of the continent's food security plan. On the other side, I've presented an ecosystem. It's the commercial ecosystem. So to those listening here today and listening to this talk online, you might be an academic, a business enabler, a bank, an investor, government, academic, a farmer, an NGO, or just simply an interested person in aquaponics. We must understand and stop trying to do this in isolation. The concept of coming together does not stop with a sports team. Having watched the Springboks return from a success, four World Cups, a captain that's led beautifully, the power of coming together and working as one towards a common goal was seen. And this doesn't have to stop with a sports team. With the right people, tools, technology, support from government and the private sector, we can build an ecosystem that can feed the continent, empower local communities, and grow Africa. This is Food for Thought. Thank you. Thank you.